Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. All right, so I've got a new setup in my podcast office and I was, I'm not, not like completely familiar with it just yet. Cause I haven't done it, the process of it as much as I need to. So part of the process involves muting some of the channels that we've got. And I'm afraid I'm going to forget to unmute it. I didn't, but I've done it before. We've had to scrap entire episodes before because I forgot to unmute channel. But in case you're wondering, it's fine. How are you? Good. All right. Um, Life in Connecticut is starting to uh, round the round the bend, I guess. Um, yeah, life in Connecticut is good. I just, you know, my brain still hasn't caught up with the fact that this is life. What did it think it was? A road trip. Oh, all right. So, uh, how long until it's finally convinced? That- Who knows? All right. Um. So, uh, what are we going to be talking about today? We are going to make peanut butter ice cream. Um, this is, uh, this is going to be good. Now, why did we choose peanut butter? Because the recipe is freely available on the blog. Um, the Keto Angels Kitchen site. So people can dip their toe in the ice cream making waters, should they do so. Uh, without having to purchase the gloriousness that is the keto ice cream scoop. Without, and uh, it's like a gateway drug. Like they're gonna, they're gonna get this. It. Yeah. This is the gateway drug. Um, you all will find out if you haven't yet how terribly, terribly easy it is to make ice cream that is better than anything you could get in the store. Keto ice cream, I should add, because this is a keto podcast. So it would be weird if it wasn't keto. But just in case there's people here who aren't entirely sure what we do right um, like us right that, that would include um, both of us um then yes keto ice cream that will knock your socks off and um if you're anything like me you kind of thought that uh, the ice cream making must be terribly difficult and complicated and it can be as most things can be but this isn't because i worked very hard to Make it so simple so that the maximum number of people could become ice cream gods and goddesses. All right. So where do we start? Well, first we do reviews. Oh, okay. Reviews. It's, it's like you've never done this before. Uh, all right. Was was your brain part of the like the remodeling the office process? Probably. It's entirely mm. possible. Mm. It's, uh, you know. It's one so of those days. I um, it, it was really odd that I did one cookbook review because we ran out of reviews, and um, I'm kind of thinking that maybe you all didn't like the cookbook review thing, or because since then um, we've had nine new reviews. <laughs> oh boy! So um, it'll be a while before I get to go off the ranch and do a review that isn't the podcast because we have a whole boatload now. Or or so, or we could do um, nine reviews. We could do nine reviews today. Actually, we could. I think nine's maybe a bit much. But, oh, okay. But um, maybe you know. then, maybe one then. No, no, no. We'll do more than one. I'll I'll do well. Let's see. We should do, do somewhere three. between somewhere between one and nine is what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll do three. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So 
We had a review from someone who calls themselves Keto Crush. And they called it love hate relationship, but gave us five stars. Mm. So I was encouraged by that. And they say, I have a love hate relationship with this podcast. I love the banter between Carrie and Brian, but I hate that I have to wait longer to get to the meat of the podcast. I love the information in each and every podcast, but I hate having to wait a week until the next one. I love to listen while I'm driving, but I hate not being able to take notes because there are so many great ideas and recipes. I love Motivation Monday, but I hate it because it signals the end of the podcast. Love overrules hate, so I will remain your loyal listener, Keto Crush. Um, that's a love hate right there. That's a lot of love hates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thanks for the review. So, yeah. uh, now was that a what? How many stars did you say that was? Five. Five and a love hate. Yes, that is an objective person. Yes, all the things. <clears throat> all right. Um, well, thank you for that. Uh, we have another one. We do. Connor Martin Lindell gave us six stars out of five. Six stars out of five. Now that now now we're talking. That's what that's right. the kind of that's the kind of noise I'm talking about. But it was a bit odd because there was only actually five little star emoticons. So I'm not sure what happened there. But anyway, six stars. And actually, it wasn't six stars. It was six stars. All right. Um, And Connor said, I love listening to Connie and Byron. They absolutely know their stuff and they keep me entertained on my morning commute. I just played the episode on sardines. And to be very honest, I was skeptical. I had never eaten sardines before. However, over the past few months, I have learned to trust this brilliant duo. I went out, found some sardines, and just went for it. And I'm so glad I did because they're delicious. You guys are amazing. Keep up the great work. Hope to meet you all one day. Me too, Connor. Oh, that was very nice. Um, Me too on all the fronts. I wonder. Well, (laughs) except the I love listening to Connie and Byron because I don't. But um, sardines are delicious. And we're going to keep up the great work. And um, I hope to meet you all too. You don't love listening to uh, to us? Uh, I don't love it. I do it. Uh, I do it because it, it's odd. When, when, I, when we're recording, we finish recording, and I'm like, I have no recollection of what we just talked about. So when the podcast airs, uh, I listen to it just to remind myself what I said, because um, in case anybody asks me uh, questions about it or mentions it, um, so I do listen to it. And I must admit that some episodes even make me laugh out loud. Um, okay. I, uh, I have nothing to add to that. That's, uh, cause I don't listen to any of our episodes. I, cause I don't like the sound of my voice. So I don't, I, I try to refrain from indulging in things that make me want to stick forks in my eyes. Generally speaking, generally speaking. Um, so, okay, did you, we were doing three. Did we do two or doing one, one more? We did two, and we're going to do this one. And this lady, this is the third time she's written to us. And it's Mama to K and K. And she entitled her review, Coffee as a First Meal, and gave us a smiley face and five stars. And she said, Good morning, my favorite keto podcasters. I just listened to the copy, copy. I just listened to the coffee episode. And where I do, of course, believe you two are super awesome. This is more a review of Brian's coffee recipe. Let me first start with saying I love coffee. I like it black usually and do not share Brian's opinion that it tastes like dirt. Well, we can agree to disagree about that. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Brian is very good at being disagreeable. It's almost in, like uh, I'm a in pro. In case you all hadn't figured that out about Brian. Yep, that's me. That's what I do. Yeah. It's part of my job. Anyway, Brian, blah, blah, blah. But once in a while, I like it just a bit more treat-like. Brian's recipe of what he sometimes put in his coffee was intriguing to me, and he had me at 100% chocolate. I often struggle with getting enough calories or fat in, so this sounded perfect. 
with one tablespoon each of avocado oil, MCT oil, coconut oil, and butter, problem solved. I had never tried coffee with egg, and I was a little scared, so only added one of my fresh egg yolks from today's egg pull. I'm not sure what an egg egg pull is, but that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. I blended it, and it was delicious. And at just about 600 calories with 66.5 grams of fat, I started my day off with a bang. Even if it wasn't meant to be a recipe of sorts, I made one out of it and wanted to share. I constantly appreciate you both for your fun and bantery podcasts and all that you do for our community of Ketonians. Thank you for paying so much attention to all of us. It it totally makes my Monday. Well, that's very nice. Um, the, she's right. It, it is, is, is a she or is it a, is it a guy or a gal? Do you know? Does it say? Mama, Mama to K and K. Mama or Mummer? Mama. As M-A, in, M-A. Oh, Mount. mom. Okay. Mama. Um, well, that's a very nice review. I, you're right. That wasn't really a recipe, but I'm glad that you found it, uh, delectable as it were. Um, I find it interesting that she didn't, according to the, to what she listed there, she didn't add any sweetener. So. That's even better. Why? Well, because some people have have issues with sweeteners. And I always advocate for if you can do it without a sweetener, good. Just because, you know, people get weird about sweet food. And if you can refrain, that's probably the better choice. Just saying. Just saying. Because I think I mentioned that I add sweetener to mine whenever I do, whenever I doll it up like that. So, but that was very nice for you to try. Uh, we should come up with a name for that particular recipe. Or okay. not. Or not. I don't know. As Carrie sips on her 14 gallon jug of coffee. I have to tell you all, I wish that this had happened before we did the coffee episode because um, I received a gift since then. And um, one of our lovely uh, Keto Evangelist Unlimited people, uh, also a regular in the groups in, in the Keto Evangelist Kitchen and the success group and everywhere. Um, people had been badgering me for for a housewarming list, which was really difficult for me to come up with because I'm British and we we typically don't like warm doing, houses. We well, well we don't we, well we do like warming houses, but one I'm here with and I'm Billy no mate. So if I had a housewarming, there'd be nobody to invite. Wait wait wait, wait hold on. Except possibly Adam hold and his wife. Hold which, on. What did what did you just say? I'm um, Billy no mate. Billy no mates. Oh, you're Billy No Mates. Yes, I'm Billy No Mates. Is that a British thing? Yes. It, does that mean that you live alone? It means I have no friends. Oh, okay. Well, that's not quite true, but okay. Uh, so please, um, please if I had a housewarming, like, you know, there'd be no, nobody here because I don't know anybody. And um, I think Adam's sick of seeing the inside of my house. So that wouldn't be fun for him. Um, anyway, and then, of course, because I'm, I'm single and, and no children. And so all those other times where gift registries are a thing in normal people's lives, they're, they're, they've never been a thing for me. So I had a ton of people like pinging me saying, make a housewarming list, make a housewarming list because we want to, to help you warm your house, but, but we don't have a way. So anyway. So it was hard, but I did it. And um, and then one day, a a um, a ninja coffee bar system showed up at my house, and um, I'm terribly, terribly excited about it. And and I didn't. I used to have an espresso machine, and, and I was excited about that when it first came for a little while. But then I kind of I got. You know, the pods and and having to order them only from Nespresso. And I just felt kind of constrained by my coffee opportunities. And the frother, I had an espresso machine that had a kind of a frother on the side. And and it heats and whips. And that really wasn't terribly good with, with heavy cream because you can't whip warm cream. Because if you've listened to the cream episode, you'll know. That um, the heat kind of literally melts the fat, so then it isn't able to to hold air. So that was always a bit disappointing. And so I moved and, and I packed up my my Nespresso machine and didn't see it for a really really long time because it was in a box somewhere. 
And um, and when I did unpack it, I just didn't feel inspired to order more pods. So anyway, the Ninja Coffee Bar system showed up and it's just like the best thing. And I absolutely love it. And I now have, I don't think Brian can see this, but, but oh, maybe you can. I don't know. Anyway, look at all that froth. I've just got uh, something that looks like a fantastical latte, um, but uh, but no no milk. It looks like a cup full of sea foam. It looks like a cup full of sea foam. It's very, very foamy and um, and no milk involved. So I'm very excited about it. And um, that's what I'm slurping on now. And I'm actually going to do a video on what I do um, with the Ninja Coffee Bar because I'm so excited. And I think maybe some of you might um, might want to make coffee like this at home. Uh, all right. So I've, I've, uh, I've looked at the Ninja coffee bar on previous occasions. Um, uh, it's got a lot of functionality. So you're liking it then, are you? I am liking it a lot. And, um, one of the things I like about it is that it does, it's not an either or one, it's not a pod. So you can, uh, on a whim, just change the brand or whatever of coffee you want. So if I'm, I don't know, out and about, and I find some fantastical artisan coffee, I can use that in my machine now because I'm not tied to one brand. So that was cool. Um, but one of the other things I really like about it is that you can do a single cup or you can make a big old carafe. So if you've got peoples, which I don't really have, but I have Adam, um, um, I can make a pot of coffee in the morning rather than making lots of little cups for us. I can just make a pot and, and it's got a warm and it'll keep it warm. And so it just, it feels like it does everything. It, it feels like the best of all the worlds. Well, that was, uh, that seems like it's a good, uh, a good I can make a, a, a whole carafe. I can make a half carafe. I can make a, all sorts of different things. I, it'll fit a travel mug. You can do a regular cup. You can do, and there's lots of different settings on it. So you can, um, you can, you can even brew coffee at the right strength for putting over ice. Because, of course, if you do it at normal strength, then put it in ice, then you end up with really watery coffee. But they've, they've come up with a way where you can make coffee that when you put it over the ice, it's still the right strength. Which is kind of magical, uh, because yeah, iced coffee or cold brew coffee are like two like special animals. Yeah, apparently, and and, and so it has this other, it has a couple of other special settings. So if you like putting all the the dairy things, which kind of dilutes your coffee, they have a setting whereby you still get the full strength of the coffee, even though you've dumped a lot of other stuff in it. So that's really cool too. Anyway, there's lots of things it can do. And I'm very, very, very excited about it. Well, it's a good thing we did the coffee episode already. Maybe we'll and, get- um, and now I kind of haven't been, I haven't done my my 30 mile round trip for a decent cup of coffee since this beast arrived because I can make really, really, really good coffee at home now, like frothy latte style, cappuccino style and everything, which I had to go out for. So it's actually saved me a fortune. It's the way the founding fathers meant coffee to be had. So welcome to America. All right. So is that the third and final review? Yes. We'll, um, we still have one, two, three, four. But we still have six. Uh, and there's a possibility that more could show up. There is a possibility that more will show up. All right. Um, then uh, I guess we, I guess we're stuck in in uh, getting into the actual show portion of the show. Now we're talking ice cream. Yes. Yes, we are. Now, why did we pick this particular flavor of ice cream? Is it because we love when, when because, I developed it originally? Yeah, is it because we love peanut butter? No, no, it's not. Well, it's because I think peanut butter is kind of divisive. I think uh, uh, half of us love peanut butter. No, maybe more than more more of us love peanut butter. However, half of us choose not to eat peanut butter. So the caveat with this is, if you're not a peanut butter eater if you choose not to eat peanut butter um because it's inflammatory to you then 
I haven't tried it, but I've heard it mentioned that if you do this recipe with almond butter instead, it's just as fabulous. It doesn't taste of peanuts, but it's fabulous. Oddly enough. So although this is called peanut butter ice cream, you could do it with almond butter and call it almond butter ice cream and be just as deliriously happy. All right. So if peanuts aren't your thing or if your taste buds thinks peanuts are your thing but your body says, eh, then um, then use almond butter. And there is a brilliant article written by one Mr. Brian Williamson on the ketoevangelist.com blog, which talks about, which will help you decide whether peanut butter is for you or not. Well, that sounds terrible. What does? That, that article. It sounds like. No, whenever it gets posted in the, in the kitchen, people love it. People get really, it, it seems to lift the cloud on whether peanuts are in or out. It's weird because you know, I said in that article that for some reason people have decided that they're going to die on their peanut sword. Like that's the thing. Um, you know, there's certain arguments that I don't know why they have a, they're so virulent, but they are. And peanuts seems to be one of them for some reason because people do love them. You know, we, we kind of grew up eating peanut foods, peanut flavored foods, peanut butter. In America thing. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have peanuts in England and we do have peanut butter and we do have peanut flavored things, but like, like 2% of what you'll have in America. You're a bit right. peanut crazy here that we're, we're, it's, yeah, it's like movies, movies and peanuts. We, we're, we have them, but we, we're not obsessive over them. Right. Um, so people just, they we get, don't we, die on peanut butter swords in England. No, no, not at all. Um, you, uh, you die on just, a stiff upper lip sword. Um, yes. So uh, one of the things I talk about in there is um, like, I'm one of those people that really likes peanut butter, especially if you combine peanut butter with dark chocolate, um, I will do your bidding. However, I don't really, that's good to know. Well, but I don't eat it uh, anymore because uh, I don't, I don't like the, the lipid profile of peanuts and peanut butter. Um, and I talk about that in the article. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with it inherently. It's just that I notice for me, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't do well for me. Um, uh, so it's a personal choice and I, I sort of break it out in that article trying to explain the pros and cons, the arguments for and against and whether or not they're valid, uh, from a, from strictly an objective point of view, not with an agenda. Cause I'm one of those people that Carrie's talking about. I love peanut butter, but I don't eat peanut butter and for very s strong reasons. So. Um, mostly, most of which is just a personal reason. And that's the ultimate conclusion is you got to decide for yourself. Um, one of the things that bugs me is when people start freaking out because someone else ate peanut butter. Like if they, they, I had this peanut butter thing and they start yelling at them about it. Calm down. You know, this person's making a choice. You don't have to eat it. If you're, if you're screaming that peanut butter or peanuts are not keto, please read the article. Um, and then, then hopefully that will help explain, uh, my position on on this oddly controversial topic but that's enough of a segue let's talk ice cream so yes now let's talk ice cream ice cream has to start with a base of fat that's kind of the that's the, that's the starting point so what are we using for this particular base of fat so we're using peanut butter all right or if you're not doing the peanuts for whatever reason almond butter Okay. Is um is a lot of the fat involved in this recipe. So um what you're gonna need is oh actually I'm glad this recipe is this recipe because it I can answer some questions that people have in the in the kitchen. So you're gonna start with two cups of hemp milk. Now, some people struggle to find hemp milk. And I think in Australia and New Zealand, hemp milk is not even a thing because hemp, I believe, at least it was, it used to be the case that hemp milk, because it was made of hemp, was not available in Australia or New Zealand. There's no hemp products. That may have changed, but that's what I recall, at least uh, uh, 
if there's changes recent. So, but it calls for two cups of hemp milk. Now that allows me to explain because of course I get a ton of people saying, why do I have to use hemp milk or can I use some other milk? Can I substitute hemp milk for something else? So the answer is yes, you can substitute any nut milk you like, or you can use thin coconut milk. When I say thin coconut milk, I mean the coconut milk that comes in a carton and is very thin. It looks like super white regular milk. Not coconut cream. Not coconut cream, not the thick stuff in a can. I'm talking about the thin stuff in a carton. So yes, you can use whatever nut milk you like, whatever nut milk you have to hand, whatever nut milk is available to you. However, there are some reasons why I use different milks. And as always, the best result is going to be achieved with the milk that I write in the recipe. Um, In this case, hemp milk. So, yes, you can substitute it out with most, the most common is almond milk. Yes, you can. However, the flavor will be different. It will work the same, but the flavor will be different. Hemp milk has a kind of a caramelly undertones. So make it with almond milk if that's what you have or if that's what you like. Just know that it will taste slightly different. The other reason that I switch up the nut milks, and if you have a copy of the Keto Ice Cream Scoop cookbook, you will see that I use a variety of nut milks. The reason for that, or one of the reasons for that is, so one taste, they taste different. For example, one of the coffee ice creams, I tried making it, I don't remember without looking which way around it was, but I tried making it with hemp milk. And because I thought the the flavor profile of the caramelly hemp would actually be really good with coffee. But I trialed it with all the different nut milks and the purest, most coffee flavor came by using almond milk. So I didn't use hemp milk for that. I used almond. And there was a there was a noticeable difference in the flavor of the resultant ice cream. So that's one reason that I use the nut milks I do. One of the other reasons is that keto is I don't think it's restrictive, but the 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 number of ingredients we have available to use that work for this lifestyle is a lot less than than people who eat a, a typical diet. So one of the problems that can cause or could be a problem for some people is that you you're limiting the different nutrients that you're getting in inside you. So one of the reasons that I change up the nut milks in the ice cream recipes is so that you are taking on board a wider range of nutrients because, of course, nutritionally, they're all a little bit different. So yes, you can just buy almond milk and use almond milk for all of them, but the flavors are going to be not as intended, but also you're going to be reducing your nutrient profile. So that's why those are the the two main reasons why I alter up the milks. I'm trying to get the widest range of good stuff inside you. Okay. And plus, you know, it tasted decent with that particular mix. Yes. Right. All right. So So, we're starting with hemp milk. So we're starting with two cups of hemp milk. If you can't get hemp milk, you can get another nut milk or almond milk. You can use that. You can also use the thin cartoned coconut milk. As always, with any nut milk, make sure that it is unsweetened and it needs to say unsweetened somewhere on the carton and always check the ingredients because we should always check the ingredients of everything because even weird things that you would expect have nothing naughty in, they often do. So always read your labels. Pick the best one um, that you can find. So we've got our two cups of of, of nut milk. Then we're going to take three quarters of a cup or 
if you're not in America, six fluid ounces of smooth, natural, unsweetened peanut butter. And we're going to... Did you use a particular brand or did you... Are you you're not tied to... Not that we're, you know, we're associated with a brand, but I just wanted to... You know, is there a particular one that you, you prefer? I use... if I And I don't eat... Well, one, because I'm British and I'm not, you know, like in love with peanut butter. I have a, a normal amount of love for the peanuts. Mm. Uh, I don't eat them very often. I don't know if they're inflammatory to me, but it's just not really a huge thing for me. I, I am certain that if I have peanut butter in my fridge, it will be from Trader Joe's. Um, they make a variety of different peanut butters. And as I recall, certainly the one I used is unsweetened. It's just peanuts and salt. Um, and of course, Trader Joe's prices tend to be more agreeable. So um, I'm pretty sure without looking, no, in fact, I'm certain even without looking that it's Trader Joe's. Okay. Uh, you can, though, if you do the peanut thing, possibly the best thing is to go somewhere where there is a peanut butter maker in the store where you essentially pour roasted or unroasted salted peanuts in the top of the hopper and it squirts out freshly made peanut butter underneath because that, then you know that there's nothing in it except the peanuts. Right. So that's your first option. The next option, going back to the reading the label thing, if you're looking at peanut butter, it should have no more than two ingredients. It should say right. peanuts and sometimes they'll add like, like red palm oil or something like that just to, just to give it a little bit more, um, viscosity or a little bit less viscosity um then if it's got more than that please put it back on the show that's my recommendation do what you want i'm just saying i wouldn't right. i wouldn't uh i wouldn't indulge in something like that a lot of times they add sugar uh because you know peanut butter itself the the natural kind eh, not that great it's uh, yeah especially when you grew up eating the name brand popular peanut butters that are just laden with sugar so just be cautious of that. Don't just grab any kind of peanut butter. I mean, if you care about your, your health, that is. If you don't, uh, have a cigarette while you're doing it. Otherwise. Um, all right. That's really dumb advice. Well, I'm just saying. If, um, you, don't, yeah. if, you, if you don't care about your health, then you know, yeah. um, live it up. Anyway, so unsweetened peanut butter. Then you're going to take six and a quarter ounces, or if you're in metric land, 175 grams of xylitol. You do not substitute the xylitol with any other um, sweetener. So let's make sure that we're clear on that particular point, because people are going to ask, hey, I don't have xylitol. Can I substitute? Stop right there. Stop right there. No. Right? No. Okay. So. You, well, of course you can, because you're big boys and girls and you can do whatever you like. But if you substitute the xylitol with any other uh, sweetener, you will be sad. You will not have ice cream. You will have a frozen lump of something uh, at the end of this process. You will not have scoopable ice cream. Okay. Did they have in in Jolly Old? Do they have like um like ice, like flavored ice that you could put like in a, either in a, like a paper cup and like they slushies? I don't know what they call it. They would call it. I think that's what they call it. Okay. I've never had one, but I've seen it. They, it's like bright blue and things. They, and, if you, and it if comes you, in, a, in, a, in a cone. Paper cone. You know, in a paper cone thing. So if you substitute that at all, you're going to end up with something like that. It's going to be, you have to scrape it off. You don't scoop it. Right. Okay. So. So, that's and at this point, mean. it might be another thing that makes me just want to. Uh, toss my Mac out of the window is that, that when we have these threads in the Keys of Angeles Kitchen Facebook group, um, people will go, well, that's okay. Just use a erythritol and add vodka to keep it soft or just use a erythritol and add glycerin. And I'm here to tell you, don't do that because vodka and erythritol does not soft ice cream make, nor does glycerin and erythritol. And if you, if people who say they've added vodka and or glycerin to ice cream made with erythritol and it comes out soft, 
they haven't done it because if they had, they'd know that it doesn't work. So anyone that says, oh, just add alcohol or glycerin, they haven't done it. It doesn't work. I, I actually did a, a science experiment. I had um, a few months back, I got very frustrated about the vodka slash glycerin suggestions or just do this, it'll work. And so I made batches of a bunch of batches of ice cream with erythritol and I added various things to it that I had seen people say worked. None of them worked. None of them. And in one of these batches, I had like half a cup of vodka, not a tablespoon like people suggest, like half a cup froze like a block of ice. So alcohol doesn't work. Glycerin doesn't work. Right. So use xylitol. However, because some people are just going to go, but, 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 but if you use alcohol or glycerin with either regular sugar or xylitol, it totally works. But if you use them with any of the other sweeteners, it doesn't work. So I think when people say, oh, just add a tablespoon of vodka or just add a tablespoon of glycerin, they haven't actually tried it with with the other keto sweeteners. They're just going on the fact that it works in regular pre-keto recipes that have sugar in. It does work, but it doesn't work with erythritol. So anybody who suggests that doesn't know what they're talking about. All right, then. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I am actually going to do a video demonstrating that um, because there's a lot of sad people. No, not that they're sad, but they, but they they become sad because they follow this advice and it doesn't work. And then and so they're sad because they've wasted ingredients. And that, as regular listeners will know, is something that really upsets me because I don't want you to have fails and I don't want you to waste money. And I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want any of that right. for you. I want you to have the best ice cream you've ever eaten. Or else. So, or else. So, that's the deal with sweeteners. So, where did we get to? We've got our hemp milk. We've got our peanut butter. We've got our xylitol. You're also going to want half a teaspoon of sea salt and half a cup, or for those outside, four fluid ounces of heavy cream. If you want to do a dairy-free version, or if you need to do a dairy-free version, you may substitute thick coconut milk for the heavy cream. The thick coconut milk is that stuff that's sometimes called coconut cream, sometimes called coconut milk. It comes in a can and you shake the living daylights out of it because if you open it at room temperature, it's mostly solid and then there's a little bit of like coconut water. What I do is I, and if it's, if it's solid, I stand the can of coconut cream or milk in warm water until it becomes fluid and then I shake it and then I use it. So you can switch out an identical amount of thick coconut milk if you want dairy or need dairy-free version. So, but you're going to have half a cup or four fluid ounces of heavy cream and a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So now I'm going to run through that list of ingredients as a list because you probably want to stab me right now because the quantities are all over the map. So here's what you need. You need two cups or 16 fluid ounces of hemp milk. You want three quarters of a cup or six fluid ounces of smooth, natural, unsweetened peanut butter. Six and a quarter ounces or 175 grams of xylitol, half a teaspoon of sea salt, half a cup or four fluid ounces of heavy cream, and a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're going to place those six things in a blender and you're going to blend it for 10 seconds. Then you're going to turn the blender to the lowest speed. When I say lowest speed, what you're really looking for is that it's just fast enough that that little vortex is, 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 is there. The lowest speed where you get the, the, the vortex. But, but before you actually get sucked into it, you, know, I mean, you, you, you can't, if you, yes. if you find yourself getting pulled into it, you've gone too far. Yes. Well, you've gone way too far. So you should just until there's a vortex. 
as soon as you see that vortex, then then don't turn it up any higher than that. So the don't, lowest speed. Don't get hypnotized by the vortex. That's very important. Don't don't get hypnotized by the vortex. So with the the blender at that low speed, and while the blender is still running, you are going to tap a half a teaspoon of guar gum through the opening in the lid of the blender. And you're going to blend it for 30 seconds and no more, just 30 seconds. Hmm. Count if you have to. Put a timer on if you have to. 30 seconds. My recipes tend to be very, very, very exact. They're very, very exact for a reason. And of course, the number one reason, as with everything I do, is that I want you to have the most fabulous end result. I want you all to be rock stars in the kitchen. So when it says 30 seconds, it's not some kind of, oh, 30 seconds will do. It's like 30 seconds. Don't go over that. Now, is, now, if people are on the metric system, is it still 30 seconds? It is still 30 seconds. Okay, got it. And the reason you don't want to go over that is because guar gum, if blended, if agitated, mixed, whatever, blended for too long, it will become gummy. So if you don't want gummy ice cream, which I'm imagining that most of you don't, 30 seconds and no longer. No matter what, uh, no matter if you're metric or imperial. No matter, 30 seconds, and then turn the blender off. Got it. So then you're going to, so uh, people who thought that ice cream was complicated, how simple is that? Dump six things in a blender, blend it for 10 seconds. With the blender on low speed, tap the seventh ingredient in through the opening and lid blend for 30 seconds. That's it. Done and done. Then you're going to pour the, what I call them ice cream custards. Traditional ice cream is typically made using eggs and you have to cook them and you have to make an egg custard for the whole thing to work. And but I deliberately developed all of the ice cream recipes without eggs in. And that's not because we don't love eggs. We do love eggs. Eggs are fantastic. Some people are allergic to eggs and that's sad, but that's not why there's no eggs in there. Although it does mean that these recipes are equally as um, available to people who cannot eat eggs. But the number one reason why I developed all these without eggs is to take away the need for you to cook and to take away the possibility that your ice cream will go wrong because egg custards can, they can be finicky. They can be tricky. And um, so I wanted you all to have fabulous ice cream without being terrified of breaking an egg custard and just to make this whole thing easier and faster for you. So that's why there's no eggs in there. Um, but I still refer to them as custards because I don't really know what else to call them. So okay, you've got your, your peanut butter custard in your blender. You are going to pour it into a bowl or a jar. I like to use the ball, the canning jars or my Le Parfait jars, the ones with the rubber gasket. So I like to store my ice creams in there because it makes it, it doesn't take up a lot of space in the fridge. Super easy. Um, and you can also pour, when you come to churn it, you can pour straight into the churner. And, and so you're avoiding dirtying lots of things. And as any of you who listen to me, well, I'll know that di washing dishes is just not, it's not really my favorite thing. So if I can avoid doing that, I will. So... I like to put them in, in those jars. If you put it in a bowl, you're going to cover it with either a plate or some cling film, whatever, and you're going to place it in the fridge for at least eight hours and preferably overnight. Now, if you're all gasping a horror at that, um, trust me when I tell you that the resultant ice cream will be much better if you I'm going to call it age. If you age your ice cream custard, you're going to have a better result. So if you're listening to this and you want peanut butter ice cream for dessert, that's not going to happen. And you should know that up front. This to get really, really great ice cream, the process takes 
days. It doesn't take you days. It takes you almost no time. But you, there are large swathes of time that, that need to be in between all the steps. One of the great things about this is that um, as long as you think ahead, ice cream making can become the least time-consuming thing you do. Because, for example, you've got five minutes on a Monday, so you just sling the custard together and whack it in the fridge. Well, then maybe Thursday night you have the window to churn it and, you know, then by Friday or Saturday you have fabulous ice cream ready. So that's what I do. You can actually break the ice cream making up over, say, a week or several days. No one step takes you much time at all. So it becomes a very, very easy thing for you to do. But so you're going to put your ice cream custard in the fridge for at least eight hours, preferably overnight. I always do mine overnight. And sometimes I have left my custards in the fridge for up to a week. Um, They get better and better with age. So that's just something I use to plan my my week out is that it's not the length of aging. Once you've gone past eight hours, uh, you know, that's entirely up to you. Do not skip chilling. And it doesn't matter what type of churner you have. Most people have the the one I recommend, which is the Cuisinart IC21. We are not sponsored by Cuisinart. They pay us nothing. That's just really, really good, not expensive churners. So when, you talk, oh, but when you're talking about chilling, you're not talking about just leaning back in your recliner and relaxing. No. Different kind of And churning. I'm also not talking about freezing. It, when you've made the custard, it goes in the fridge, not the freezer. Fridge. fridge. We've had a few people that uh, have misunderstood and put the custard in the freezer and then wondered why they can't churn it because it's frozen. It's a big, it's a big lump of ice at that point. Right. So, um, but for those of you who have the budget or want to make a lot of ice cream and have the type of ice cream churners with a compressor in, You still need to chill your custard. A lot of people are confused by that. The compressor type of of churner means that you can churn back to back to back. It does not negate the need to have a super chilled custard before you start. You will not have as good ice cream if you put room temperature custards in your churner. Or warmer. Or warmer. So whatever churner you have, don't skip the eight plus hours of chilling if you want the best product and you don't want to have um, white fails like my custard is not freezing or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you, you, your, your ice cream custard has languished in the fridge until it's super cold. You're gonna get, so when it's ready to churn, you're going to get it out you're going to give it a mix or if it's in in a jar, you can give it a good shake. You're going to make sure it's completely mixed and then you are going to pour it in the churner. All churners are slightly different. So you do need to uh, use your churner according to the manufacturer's instructions. However, comma, if your, manu- your manufacturer's instructions will probably say churn for 20 minutes. And if you go by time, there's a good chance that you will be sad because the churning time can vary significantly depending on a number of factors. So the ambient temperature of the room you're churning in, the how cold your custard is, how frozen your bowl is. There's like a lot of variables. So what the manufacturers list in their book is only a guide. And I highly recommend that you go into, actually, you can either go up onto my YouTube channel, which is The Real Carrie Brown, or you can go into the Key to Evangelist Kitchen Facebook group and search for videos. You will find a video I made of um, churning, when's the right time to stop churning? And um, I highly recommend that you learn how 
how to know when it's done rather than relying on a time that the manufacturer has given you. Churning typically takes between 15 to 20 minutes, but sometimes my ice creams have taken up to 40 minutes if it's warmer or depending on what the ingredients are. So if you churn your ice cream and you find there's a thick layer of super hard ice cream on the sides and or the bottom of your churner, you are churning it for too long. And that indicates that you've probably just done what the manufacturer said, i.e., you know, 25 minutes, and it's been too long. So go to YouTube, go in the kitchen, check out the videos so that you can see what it looks like and then gauge that for your churning time, not um, a standard time set by the manufacturer. Anyway, so you're going to churn it. And then it will take 15 to 25 minutes typically. When the ice cream has frozen to a soft serve consistency, and I think most of you know what that is, then quickly scoop it out of the churning bowl and into a pre-chilled container. I like to use glass because I like to use glass. I don't – plastic, I have issues with plastic, so – I use Pyrex glass, but there are lots of other alternative containers that you can use. I highly recommend you chill them. You put your container in the freezer while your custard is churning so that the container is super cold when you pour the churned custard into it. And then you're going to cover it and you're going to place it in your freezer for at least eight hours and preferably overnight. Say that last part again, eight hours, preferably overnight? Yes. Okay. Um, ice cream, actually, the initial freeze, ice cream takes longer to freeze than than most people, including me, imagine. Um, so if you can plan it so that it's overnight in the freezer, that would be good. A little word. If you follow these instructions exactly and you use xylitol and you follow the the churning instructions and your ice cream is not scoopable, it is almost certainly that the temperature of your freezer is too cold. Temperature of the freezer is too cold. Right. Uh, Um, So what I do, because I have a standalone freezer in the garage, which freezes colder than the freezer that's in my fridge freezer in the kitchen. So what I do is I make my ice cream, I churn my ice cream, I put it in the container, I put it in the freezer in the garage, which is colder. The point being, you want to get the your churned ice cream frozen as quickly as possible. So I put it in the in the deep freeze in the garage overnight. And then in the morning, I bring it in and put it in the freezer in the kitchen, which doesn't freeze as cold. And then by that night, the ice cream is frozen, but it's not over frozen like it would be from the deep freeze. So it's it's still frozen, but it's come up a little bit um, in the freezer in the kitchen. And so it is perfectly scoopable ice cream. If you don't have a freezer uh, in the garage, or somewhere else I know particularly, you know, I remember living in England where there's like almost no space for any kind of freezer, let alone a spare one, Um, then just freeze it in your regular freezer that comes with your fridge freezer. Um, But yes, if it's, if it's not scoopable, then the, your freezer is too cold. Too cold. And I actually, having just moved into my house and got my new freezer here, I actually have been doing some test runs and the the way I set the temperature of the freezer in my fridge freezer in the kitchen was I made ice cream and then played with the temperature over several days until the ice cream came out perfectly. And that's now, that's how I figured out the temperature to set the freezer at. So you, you troubleshoot your freezer based upon the ice cream outcome. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So, but a, a, um, oh, but hold on. Wait a second. Now you need to tell people, I, 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 this may be unfair, but you need to tell people about your ice cream, about your ice maker situation. Cause you, well, I don't have one. So I thought you got an external one. Oh, that's right. You had a separate fridge. 
so <laughs> so I went to great lengths to find a fridge freezer that had no ice maker because I, I I'm British and we we don't do ice and ice makers take up a huge amount of space inside a fridge freezer and I just want to use I just want a fridge that's like got nothing in it and I don't use ice anyway and so I I looked for a fridge freezer that didn't have the ice maker in the door or inside or anywhere. Um, and also that didn't have one in the freezer section either. And, and I found one and I'm completely in love with it. I absolutely love my fridge freezer. Um, but what I hadn't banked on was all the, the, the people who live in Connecticut had been telling me since I moved here that um, it gets really hot. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And they're like, you're all going to need ice. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I, you know, no. And uh, they were right. And so Adam's been laughing at me because um, at the end of May, I was like, uh, whoever let me buy a fridge freezer without an ice maker is fired. Um, because now I have a sudden desire to put ice in my beverages, which is the first time that's happened in my entire life. And as I like to say, welcome to America. Yes. And um, one of the hazards of having lived in Seattle my entire uh, American life is that, you know, you don't need ice there. Anyway, so um, so then I was in a bit of a tailspin because I had no ice and it was hot. And uh, I was going to buy, I found out that the countertop ice makers were a thing. And I got a bit excited about having one. I was going to keep it in the garage, though, so that it wouldn't, uh, my street cred wouldn't plummet. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then Adam uh, reminded me that I have the fridge freezer that used to be in the kitchen and it's downstairs in the basement. And all I had to do was get him to hook that one up and, um, and I could have ice downstairs making downstairs. So, and then other people suggested and I'd forgotten that um, fridge freezers come with those little ice trays. Mm -hmm. And so actually I went and made myself, I have two little trays of, I'm, I'm going to make some more and take them out and put them in a bag. And so I'm going to have a little, a little stock of uh, pre-made ice. So there you go. So the, uh, the ice making crisis was, um, was mostly solved. Mostly. Mostly. But it does actually require effort on my part. Of, of stair clumping. Of either stair clumping or remembering to make ice ahead of time and then and take it out of the things and put it in a bag and keep it in the freezer. Yes. Um, okay. So. Uh, Failing that, I can always go to the store and buy ice, but that just seems like the bizarrest thing in the world to me that yeah. anybody would go to a store and pay money for ice. I just think that's so weird. I agree. I agree. I've done it, but I agree. So I, um, I absolutely. Never want that to be a thing. Never, ever. Although, I must say, in case of an emergency, I'm happy that it's an option. All right. So the I derailed us a little bit, but I was just pointing out that you troubleshoot your freezer based upon the ice cream outcomes. Don't let that impact your ice cube game. Right. So um, you will find that if your freezer is the perfect temperature for storing ice cream so that it's scoopable, that will be the perfect temperature for everything else you would have in a normal, regular home fridge freezer freezer. Okay. Um, all right. So once you... So that's why I calibrated my freezer based on my ice cream right? <laughs> um, rather than the other way around. So once you've done this final step, what, what's the next step? Take it out of the freezer, get your ice cream scoop, scoop a perfect scoop of keto ice cream, eat it and delight in the wonder that is being an ice cream god or goddess. So are you a uh, warm up the ice cream scoop person first before you, before you dive in or do you just grab it out of the, out of the drawer and, and go to town? No, it gets scooped into a bowl, if that was the question. No, no. Warming the scoop up before you put the scoop in. No, 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 no. I, uh, no, you won't need to, unless your freezer is too cold, then you might. But I found after years and years and years, I found uh, the perfect ice cream scoops. And um, if the lovely Chris Duckett reminds me, I will put, I will have him put a link to them in the show notes. Um, 
most ice cream scoops in my experience will, you know, they'll break or they're, they just, they don't do good. And I eventually found one that is indestructible and makes perfect scoops every time. It does not require, it doesn't have the heating handle. It doesn't require dipping in anything. It just, it just scoops ice cream brilliantly. Cause that's its job. Because that's its job. And I've never had one break and I've never had to replace it. And that all makes me super happy. All right, then. Uh, all right. So there you go. That's uh, peanut butter ice cream. Now you can. Or almond butter. Or almond butter. Some kind of butter ice cream. Um, if this, if, if I were tweaking things a little bit, I would add chocolate chips, dark chocolate chips to it. But that's just me because I like. Because it is impossible for Brian to just do something as it's written oh yeah of course yeah that's I, that that should be understood um this is why recipes for me recipes are more just suggestion guidelines than uh, please do not listen to brian when it comes to ice cream oh you can, you don't have to qualify it by the ice cream thing just don't listen to me just leave it at that um that's, that's just actually a, that's, that's just good a, advice yeah it's just actually that is good advice right. just don't listen to brian don't, don't listen to me but especially when it comes to ice cream Right. Don't use these recipes as a guide. If you want the the result, then don't. Right. Um, Trust me on this, people. Right. I have spent thousands of hours of my life figuring out how to make the, the, Making the suggestions. ice creams perfect. Right. Um, if you deviate, ice cream is the most complex foodstuffs we have created as humans. And it is an incredibly delicate scientific balance of fats sugar or sweetener xylitol and water so fiddle and you'll be sad right fiddle at your uh at your own peril uh, yeah uh all right so then uh i guess you know what that means yes it's motivation monday so what's our motivation for today well, because I'm super smart, I just closed all the windows and it's gone away. Aww. So um, entertain oh. the truth. Can our motivation I... Monday be don't close the windows before you're ready to leave? No, you know, you should always close oh. the windows before you're ready to leave. Well, then no. Because That's otherwise not... someone will go in your house and steal your stuff. Or they can break in to clean the place. I mean, that's a possibility too, right? No. You don't think so? No. Now, is that because you uh, you don't trust people or that you've had that experience before? I haven't had that experience in my house, but okay. I have had that experience in my car three times. Oh, really? Someone broke in to clean your car and they ended up stealing they stuff? They didn't, they didn't break in to clean it. Oh. They broke in and took stuff. No. Three times. What did yeah. they take? Anything that, I kn- anything that was mine? No. This oh. was all before I knew you. And actually, it has not happened since I've been in America. It's also, ha- it hasn't happened since you met me. Coincidence? I don't think so. Just saying. So wait, this was in Canada or in Australia that you had your car broken? None. None of the above. It was in England? Yes. All three times. Wow. That surprises me. What with all the bobbies and whatnot? Yes. What's the difference between a bobby and a peeler? Um, and once, and I think it was the last time, the third time, my car was in the Harrods parking lot. I mean, the parking lot of Harrods. That's really, posh. people, That's a posh really? Place. That's a posh. Exactly. And, um, well, if you're going to break into cars, you might as well go to a posh place because you know they're going to have nice stuff in their cars, right? Well, I mean, you know, I guess that's a good theory. But anyway, yeah, the Harrods parking <laughs> lot. And it was a, a multi story underground parking lot, anyway. Um, my colleague, cell phone was stolen this is when cell phones were were like you know you had to like carry them they were like enormous and anyway um um anyway so yes that was that was the last thing but i've never had my house uh broken into ever ever right because i don't leave when the windows are open i got you okay so so that's good i'm writing that down that's good right there i'm very i'm very careful about Closing all the windows and locking all the things and putting the alarm bells on. Ah, yes. All, all good things. All very good. Yes. Things. Um, all right. So, uh, did this buy us enough time? Yes. Okay. What's our, what's our motivation for today then? If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Oh, that's good. If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Um, 
so uh like that, that kind of goes hand in hand with like you know if you really if you really want it you'll work for it kind of thing yeah no nothing well i mean if that if that's what that says to you then that's what that says to you well, okay yeah it i mean if you but if you want something you wouldn't keep giving up on it you know um right we talk i mean we hear people talk about all the time you know they're i fell off the wagon or uh i i decided to have a cheat day or whatever and like they can't get back on track i read something recently on a micro scale anytime you get distracted if you're working on something if you get distracted even for a minute it takes on average 23 minutes to get back focused to where you were that doesn't count the amount of time that you were distracted that's that's how much it takes how long it takes your brain to get back to where you were and it also doesn't matter how concentrated you were prior to, like how much effort you were giving to, to the work before. So it's the same kind of thing. Like you're good for months, you, you know, and you fall off the wagon for a week. It's going to take you the equivalent of 23 minutes in months time to get back on track. So why, why put yourself in that situation? It's kind of what I'm thinking. But then again, what do I know? Right. What's your take? I don't know how I don't know how to I don't know how to put it any other way than as it's written. Okay. I, I can't think maybe because it's early or maybe because I need more coffee or whatever. But um, it, it starting over is exhausting. It is that feeling that oh, I've got to start all over again. Yeah. If that if you're tired of that, if you don't give up and you just keep going and you don't falter, then you won't have to start over. Yeah. So, and, and this, as, as usual, uh, motivations Mondays are, they typically can be af- applied to the whole keto lifestyle food thing, but it apply, this applies to everything. If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Yeah, there you go. Pretty solid advice. Um, you know, because we're all, I mean, there's, everyone's working on something, you know, consciously or unconsciously, you know, that's a whole separate issue. But if you, if you, if you, there's the 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 definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results if you constantly find yourself in that situation where oh i got to start over again i mean whether it's the gym or your or getting your nutrition on point or professionally or in relationships or whatever you know um you get to a point where you're you're at a crossroads where you can sabotage it or you can sort of knuckle down and trudge forward and go past that, that comfort zone in order to stay on point. I would recommend that you, you get to that, that, uh, that on point position that you're, you fight through that, that on we place so that you get to that point where you're actually making new ground. That's me. Though. Yes. Um, all right. So pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to remember. So this week, um, if you're in that position, start now and then don't, don't, don't give up. Don't stop. Just keep going. Even when it's hard, remember why you're doing it and just keep keep moving forward. Or if you're you're in that place where you just you feel like giving up or you can feel yourself moving in that direction, just remember that if you go there, you're going to have to start over. Yeah, nobody wants that. And that's a lot more work than just keeping going with the good thing you've got going on. Right. Um all right. So there you go. That's your, that's your mission for this week. That's your motivation for this week. If you're there, don't, if you've already done, if you've already, uh, committed to the giving up, start now. And remember, you can always start you, your, your next success starts with this next decision. So make that and keep moving forward. So there you go. All right. So what's the final word on the peanut butter ice cream? You can easily be an ice cream making god or goddess this week. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So there you go. What's the... Um... Go do it. It's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere and um, master the peanut butter or almond butter if you prefer. And um, Now you said this recipe was on the Keto Evangelist Kitchen website, yes? Or is it, um, on, is it on carrybrown.com? It is definitely for sure on carrybrown.com. Okay. If it's not, I'll check. If it's not been moved over, well, we'll to put a link to it. Website. Wherever it is, wherever it is, we'll right. put a link in. But I will move it over to the Keys Evangelist Kitchen if it's not there. But either way, the link will be there so you can go grab it. And once you see how easy it is to make the best ice cream you've ever had, 
then you may want to grab yourself a copy of the Keto Ice Cream Scoop and make any or all of the other amazing flavors that are in there. And you can continue to amaze and delight your friends and family. And enemies. Just, just not your dog. Right. Don't give, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Cause it's got yeah. xylitol in it and dogs. Right. Dogs tend to dogs, not stick around. Yeah. Dogs and xylitol, not a good match. Right. So keep your keto ice cream away from your furry friends. Dogs and xylitol is like me and broccoli. It just, it's just nothing good's coming from that. Yeah. Um, all right. So I guess, um, I guess I'll talk to you next week. Yes. Yes, you will. All right, that'll do it for another trip to the kitchen. Go make yourself some ice cream. You'll love it. You'll thank Carrie for it. And if you like it, check out her Keto Ice Cream Scoop Cookbook. It's full of delicious recipes. You're going to love it even more. You can find links for that on carriebrown.com, on ketoevangelistkitchen.com. In addition to the peanut butter ice cream, there's lots and lots of other varieties. You can connect with us on social media. Carrie is the real Carrie Brown. I'm Keto Evangelist, and you can find a thriving community in Facebook, Keto Evangelist Kitchen, because that's the name. Don't worry about it. All right. Until next time, y'all, keep being awesome. Powered by ketones.